Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Jennifer Visentine, and I am part of the modernization team here at Invensys. Um, today, we kick off the first webinar in a series of modernization webinars featuring an Invensys expert every Wednesday now and through December 12th. Um, we're offering these twice a day to allow you the flexibility to choose when it's more convenient for you to attend. Um, today's topic is titled Cybersecurity, a Catalyst for Modernization, and our speaker is Tom Jackson, Principal for Invensys' Critical Infrastructure and Security Practice, a team focused on developing cybersecurity strategies. Now, before I hand it over to Tom, I just want to quickly say that there will be a chance to submit questions at the end, so all lines will be muted. Um, and with that, I'll hand it over to Tom. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, my name is Tom Jackson. Um, I work in the cybersecurity team, otherwise known as the critical infrastructure and security practice. You'll hear us referred to at times as the Invensys cybersecurity team. And today, I want to talk about cybersecurity, modernization, and the impacts to operations and business. Um, before we really get into the conversation this evening, this afternoon, depending on your time zone, one of the first things we need to discuss is what is cybersecurity. I think what, what the definition of cybersecurity and what does it mean and what does it mean to you, you know, there's a hundred definitions out there. When we talk to customers or talk to various people, we get a hundred different answers back. And a lot of times those answers vary based on where you work, your background, your industry, or maybe it's tied to a specific need or, or a particular focus. And it's probably one of the most important questions, and it lays the groundwork or the foundation for our discussion going forward. The Invensys definition of cybersecurity is the ability to control, prevent, unauthorized external or internal access to a facility's critical infrastructure. Now, the reasons for implementing cybersecurity can be almost as numerous as there are definitions of the term itself. And we have a couple listed here that we run across and we have discussions around from time to time. However, we find some people come back and say that there's no need for protection in their systems. That maybe cybersecurity is nothing they need to look at today. It's something they need to investigate maybe in the future. But then you have to sit back and answer some questions. Would your, comp would your competitors benefit from your intellectual property? Do all of your critical systems not touch the internet? Are you sure? Do you put all of your USB thumb drives through a rigorous scanning procedure? And are they under constant surveillance in the employee's hands while they're being used on the plant's premises? I mean, something like that is almost the environment we live in today. But the bottom line is everybody has something they need to protect. And that really takes us back to the actual definition of what is cybersecurity. And it's important to understand that at Invensys and with our definition of cybersecurity, we don't look at a firewall as being true cybersecurity or any virus as being true cybersecurity. At Invensys, we look at cybersecurity more of a holistic approach. We view it as starting with your program and resulting in a specific cybersecurity solution that will address your needs. I think today, many of us, as you look around, you can't turn a page in a magazine, listen to the TV almost, it seems, without re seeing or reading about a cybersecurity incident. There are just hundreds of them out there. Um, you know, the headlines are full of them. And as time goes on, I see a lot of them, uh, particularly being in the cybersecurity business, of course, my eye and ears are tuned to them. But what I've noticed more is they're more and more in the mainstream. I see more, more of the, uh, you see more Newsweeks picking up on them. It's less in the techie magazines. It's more and more into the mainstream. But the other thing that I'm finding, and I'm sure you're seeing the same, is that cyber crimes today have no geographic boundaries. It's a global situation these days. They're not just going after the richest countries. Some of these attacks and some of these situations are happening on some of the poorest. 
and there are no ideal targets. It seemed like just a while back, years ago, that a lot of the cyber crimes were really focused on the Fortune 500s or the icons of industries or banks. That was the primary target. But today, a lot of these cyber incidents are actually coming and focused on critical infrastructures of the various countries or specific types of manufacturing industries. And lastly, what, what you see today is that cyber crimes are very targeted. In the past, they were random events. Companies would get spam emails, and IT would send out uh, emails to the company saying, don't open that. But today, what you're finding is viruses like Stuxnet of a couple years ago infiltrate the company, and you basically run, they run undetected. So really, cybersecurity, the paradigm, really has changed in these past five years. So when you look at it, it's really a matter of when, not if your company will have a cybersecurity incident. It may not be major, it could be minor, but an incident nonetheless. And I think nothing really gets to that point more than a short little video clip I want to show you here from 60 Minutes. Uh, it was a broadcast that first aired March 4, 2012, and it uh, highlights it. And this is an edited version. We aren't going to make you watch the whole thing. Well, there you have it from 60 Minutes. So it's, I thought that was a good, kind of an interesting little video clip to show coming in here. Not so much around Stuxnet as much as some of the information around it, the concept of the coding, lack of detection, USB. Uh, you know, there's a lot of technology behind the actual creation of the virus, but the actual spreading of it and the simplicity of it. So it also leads to some of the other questions that are out there that we get asked a lot. And that is, why does it seem like there's so many more cybersecurity attacks today than there was yesterday or, or in years gone by? And I think the simple answer lies, really, if you just take a look at this graphic. But the answer is there are more attacks today than there has in the past. And, and a good reason for it has been, really, technology and economics. Um, traditionally, there has not been uh, there was economic barriers and technology barriers. People couldn't, the cost of PC, PCs prevented a prolific spread of the technology globally. And lack of internet, the ability to get internet uh, to hook the PCs up to wasn't there. Um, you know, I know just living here in Texas, uh, getting good, reliable internet to me, was, it took up to just about three years ago. I was still living off of uh, ADSL. But today, fast forward to really in the last couple of years, you're looking at a situation now where the uh, global statistics run anywhere from about 75, 80, 85 percent of the world's population now have access to a PC and the Internet. So really, this has changed the, the entire dynamics of, of uh, technology globally. So now it's given rise to a whole new breed of, uh, of, of cyber criminals who require, just as the video pointed out, a little bit of skill and a little bit in the way of resources. However, on the flip side, the challenge still lies for industry. Uh, it's, you know, you're dealing with a situation where prevention is still high cost and there is no silver bullet. But also, the complexity continues to increase. Companies need to start to look at cyber vulnerabilities in a little bit of a different light now. You know, if you read the headlines, these companies need to look beyond the technology perspective of what do I need to do from a solution, and they need to look at it from the business. I mean, how many companies can afford? Can your company afford to you know, deal with these questions? How would you answer the questions of loss, loss of production? You know, if you had a cyber incident take down critical infrastructure for any length of time, um, how would, you know, how would your company want to handle the loss of production? How would you have handle loss of confidence uh, on the consumer or even the commercial side, depending on your industry, due to a cyber incident that would take down loss of, uh, you know, loss of uh, anything that would compromise uh, your product in production? Or, you know, or the worst situation would be loss of life due to a cyber incident that had remote access control and was able to start or stop critical equipment remotely. I mean, these are all situations that are very real. 
And just like the line says uh, in the chart, you know, this is the focus of our group. This is why we do what we do. And as we take a look at the cybersecurity group and our solutions and how we work and integrate within the company and with, and with you, our customers, one of the cornerstones of the Invences Modernization Initiative is cybersecurity. Um, you know, in our own industries today, you have to really look no further than the events of just of the past couple of years with the viruses like the Stuxnet, Flame, Gal, Stuku, Shamoon of just the last couple months that targeted the industrial automation equipment. And they challenged businesses. Uh, I know they challenged Invences. They challenged uh, the automation industry as a whole to rethink it technologies. And just this past month, researchers have discovered yet again another virus. Uh, I think this one was called it's the derivative of flame. It's, of course, the original name now to it is mini flame. But this is the environment that we live in today. And the modernization program is one of the best times to add cybersecurity to the overall plans, to, to integrate cybersecurity into your programs and your planning procedures and processes. Because really, it helps not only to help streamline your cybersecurity initiative, but it also provides an, ec an economy of scale in the program as well. Because I think a lot of times people look at cybersecurity more from it's just there for a protection barrier for my systems. But there's a lot of synergies that, can, that cybersecurity can bring to light to help benefit the network as well. And if you're in a regulated industry, such as, say, power generation, depending on the nature of the country or the government, cybersecurity can also be a driver for, for the modernization program to help push that initiative forward. And the various industries that the cybersecurity team works in, uh, we cut across all the major, um, the, the major heavy industries that Invences traditionally is involved in. Uh, our team has experience delivering cybersecurity solutions across numerous industries. Uh, our team has direct experience in, in power, oil and gas, water, wastewater, and manufacturing. The Invensa cybersecurity team has actually worked with customers like yourselves on a number of various projects. Uh, we've dealt with internal requirements for customers, or maybe it was an IT-driven event, or or the, or the customer had a best practice initiative that they were pushing out. We've also dealt a lot with industry regulations. A lot of industries uh, have organizations that drive across the entire industry a best practice in the way of uh, industry regulations. You see a lot of this in the form of uh, the oil and gas have this, and we've worked a lot there. And of course, um, what we see a lot of now is government compliance, and that takes the shape here of NERC SIP uh, for the power generation, particularly the fossil power generators, as well as NEI 0809, which is a nuclear power regulatory uh, compliance programs, and we've dealt with all of those. But at the core of all of those in the cybersecurity uh, area, at the core of those for our solutions is best practices. I mean, the best practice approach is really how we build the foundation of all of our programs and all of our solutions. Because I think what really drives the, the, this approach for us is that we, all, we have a fundamental understanding that every plant and every, everybody's needs are very specific and they're as specific as your industry is. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to do a quick polling question, not a test or a quiz, but a quick uh, little polling question here. And it's going to give us a little segue to the uh, next section. Um, in this polling question, we're just going to ask you, if you would, uh, the polls are open. And uh, we're just going to ask you to briefly click off as many as apply. What type of uh, um, systems or devices do you implement today for your firewall tech? I mean, I say firewall. I apologize <laughs> for your uh, cybersecurity uh, technology. Uh, click as many as you want. It's by no means an exhaustive list. We're just trying to get a, a brief idea. So you can pick off as as many as you want or as few as you want. So I think give you a couple more seconds, and I think you should be doing pretty good. So okay, I think we'll say pencils down, and uh, if you haven't submitted, then we'll go ahead and pop the results up. 
All right. Well, we have a pretty pretty unanimous understanding that firewalls and antivirus. Well, it's interesting because that's the numbers aren't as high, but that was pretty much the distribution from the mornings uh, the morning uh, group. We we did this up. Uh, this webinar earlier this morning, and uh, firewalls and antiviruses uh, and any malware software seems to be the most popular uh, way to go. So if we take a look going forward here, one of the big things we see as we as we talk with people uh, in the industry is, you know, historically we find that a lot of a, a lot of our customers have been persuaded or have purchased what we call point solutions, such as firewalls or antivirus or any malware solutions, a standalone element. And you know, we understand because when you get involved with cybersecurity programs at your company, at your plant, at your facility, there's a lot of pressure to take on this new initiative, get a solution, and get it out the door and get it done. And this and the and where the pressure comes from is numerous. Uh, we, you have all of these different regulations, regulatory requirements, specifications. Getting through them and reading them is a daunting task, and understanding them is difficult at best. Uh, you know, you also have, in addition to that, you probably also find that there's some conflict or some uh, with trying to get that to align to your internal uh, IT standards that already exist. And then you may have limited staff to do it. Um, we find that the majority of the time, the people have no staff to do it. And then on top of it, you probably have to get back to your day job, because this is not what you do full time. It's just another program that you have to do. And, and then when you get that, when you do the cybersecurity initiative, it ends up being a point solution, because it's just the easiest, fastest thing to deploy. But then reality is, kicks in, and then most people will agree that a point solution or an incremental add-in like that really just increases your overall time and efforts, because ultimately, there's more questions to be asked and answered. Um, and some of those questions are really, you know, who's going to maintain that element? I, you know, we just put the firewall in there. Who's going to keep them current? How do I manage these devices now that they're in my network? You know, we see this approach uh, from time to time when we go out to different various customer sites. Uh, you know, we've actually seen firewalls in, uh, or antivirus DAT files that haven't been updated since they were first installed. Uh, we had one situation where the DAT files hadn't been updated in about five years, actually. And, you know, and, and the problem with that is it promotes a false sense of security. And that's really the worst kind, because you have a system in place and it's not current. And when you see it, you walk by it every day, and you know it's there. But if it's not maintained at an adequate level, that's a false sense of security. It's like a smoke detector that doesn't have batteries. It's not going to work when you need it. And that's the worst kind of security to have. And that's really that comes, comes full circle, is how you're going to maintain this. The Invensys approach is different. What we do is we believe in what we call our cybersecurity methodology. Not so much a point solution, such as many IT companies promote, or IT-based companies promote. We look at point solutions like the antivirus or firewalls, and we look at them and we believe they fall short or miss the overall cybersecurity target. It's just as I was mentioning earlier about the firewall. I mean, who's going to keep the firewall rule sets? Or do you have the people that can maintain or even create the rule sets? Uh, who's going to keep the antivirus updated? Who's going to push the updates or maintain those updates? Or what's the mechanism to push the updates? I mean, these are all items that need to be addressed in a comprehensive cybersecurity type environment and, and a solution. The Inventive Cybersecurity Team, when we work with you, we, we need to get from the why to address the what, the when, and the where is how we look at it. And the why needs to define your needs. And that's what's going to drive that program. Because if we don't have a program in place, it's really hard to figure out what the needs are. So first thing we do is get to the whys. What do you need? And it's not until we get to that point that we can really engage you on the how. And the how is what are the required security controls for your program. Because after all, you know we may find 
that really the only cybersecurity controls you need may just be some policies and procedures to back up the controls you already have in place. Because not every customer's programs will have the same cybersecurity controls. Too many companies will put the cybersecurity controls first and then try to fit the program into those controls. And that, to us, is, is really just kind of a backwards approach. It's kind of a chicken and the egg routine. You know, we, I've talked about a little bit about the cybersecurity in, in our approach. But we also have cybersecurity's approach internally. And it's the, in the fact that cybersecurity is more than just a solution. It's also the core of the Invents' business. And this, is, this helps kind of illustrate it. So at the base of our building, we have our IT, our security, and our IT department. And this organization, this is, the, this is the fundamental corporate IT security, where they drive out all the password policies, the authentication. I mean, recently they drove out a nice little feature that locks out my uh, cell phone every five seconds, where I have to put a PIN number in, apparently. But, this, but they run all the policies and procedures out to the employees. And then from here, we move up to the product development folks. This organization works at the next level. And what they do is they work with the Invences development policies and procedures. And those policies and procedures then are utilized in the design development of all of our software and hardware products. Now, those software and hardware products then become our portfolio, and that's the next level up. And those are basically the pillars of the, port the product portfolio, if you will. And that portfolio makes up what we refer to in the market as our enterprise control system, the ECS. And here you'll see the common market branded names, such as Foxborough or Wonderware or some of the others are in here. And then the last level or the last element of the foundation of security for Invensys is the cybersecurity team itself, the critical infrastructure and security practice group that I work on, work in. Our group works with you, the customer, to adopt your needs to develop your program. And once we do that, we then provide feedback and best information from the field back to our product development organization. This closing the loop, or this closed loop approach, really allows us to make sure that our, our product development team and our product folks all have the same information, and they can utilize that information in the next round of development so that our next generation products are all benefiting from it. And that way, everybody benefits from the best information available. And that's how the whole process works together at Invences. It becomes our DNA, if you will. The other way to look at that chart with a little more detail to it is, again, you take a look at the product lines on the left side. And then the product lines are the first layer. And then the product security layer is laid on to them. And that product security layer is the Invences policies and procedures that, that I mentioned on the previous slide. But as an example, let's say software, I'll just pick one here, uh, we utilize the Microsoft Security Development Lifecycle, the SDL. You know, this is a software development security assurance process, and it's used for all of our software products. Hardware products, such as, say, Foxborough IA servers, they'll leverage McAfee antivirus. Uh, their EPO, or their policy orchestrator. And this gives us our virus scan and host intrusion detection, data loss, just to name a few. And then that layer comes the other subsystems layer. Now, the other subsystems layer is probably as important as any other to you, the customer, because these are the non-invensive products. These are the, pro the other products that you buy in conjunction with the invensive products to make your networks run. These are the other workstations, servers, PLCs, et cetera, that make your network whole. And then the last section, or the last layer, is what we call the ECS, or the Enterprise Control System 
program security. And those items on the right are, are basically a snapshot of some of our more common uh, cybersecurity solutions that, that, that we sell. And all of this together really builds the Invensys cybersecurity comprehensive solutions. This is what makes the entire system work together. And then finally, in, in a little better graphic, what you're looking here is, 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 that a, is that a shot of showing how the different networks that, that may be deployed by, by various customers or various industries can be controlled by a common enterprise control system at the center. And then the cybersecurity team, what we do is we provide that solution that enables the cybersecure network infrastructure that then supports the enterprise control system, the ECS. And then these solutions enable the ECS to run robustly across similar or dissimilar, or what I referred to previously as the other subsystems in the network. And now that provides you a holistic cybersecurity approach. It provides optimization through network management. You get secure data acquisition. And it really just provides good, solid network stability. And we're going to move on to another uh, polling question. This one is what we're looking at is your planning status. We're getting into the second part of the talk this, this, this afternoon. And what we're looking here is uh, please, this one, you just can select one. Um, and what we're looking at is have you started? Are you at a discussion level, whether that discussion is internal or not? Preparing, meaning you're probably already have a program or a plan or an action plan in place. And the last one is you're, you've probably already done one. You've, you may have been audited, whether that audit's an internal audit or an external audit, but you probably already have a cybersecurity initiative in place. It's working, and you're already getting, you're already getting metrics against it. So we'll leave this poll open for, for another second or two. Okay, I think everybody's probably got their best answer picked. So we'll go ahead and close it. <clears throat> okay, now this is real interesting. So we've got a lot more people been audited and a lot more people preparing. Uh, the uh, the uh, earlier this morning, it was a little more of a standard distribution. We had it. There was equally equal equal high numbers at discussion and preparing with a couple audited and a couple haven't done anything. So this is a this is good. We have a good group of people that are already involved or at the audit stage. So that's good good information. So so the fact that a number of you are either getting involved or involved with the plans it's, it comes down to, with any program, in particular with cybersecurity, it becomes one of the starting place. Where, where do we begin? And really with cybersecurity, it's no different than any other program. And what we're talking about really here is that when, when, we, deal with, when we deal with cybersecurity, um, in particular, at Invensys, you know, we don't have a point solution. We're not selling a piece of hardware, so it's not an issue of we have a spec sheet and we're trying to find out, you know, do these parameters fit a particular issue? What we do, step one, is we have to go out and listen. We need to listen. We need to understand again those what, when, and where's. You know, the what. You know, what is the impact to your business, your operations, your systems? What are your drivers? What are your needs? Where are you, where do we need to be this year, next year? The winds, the deadlines, the time frames, your maintenance windows, when can the work be done? These are things that are critical to any kind of a program of this nature. And then where do I start? Uh, the where do I start sometimes sounds relatively simplistic, but really, where do I start is probably one of the most important questions in, in the work that we do. Because once we've defined your needs, we need to develop that program. And that program, in, in, in the way we approach cybersecurity, 
is it tends to start with a workshop, or what we call an assessment. And a workshop is one of the very important first steps. And you'll see a number of them listed here. But a workshop is where we work with you, your team, and the critical stakeholders to sit down and map out, based on the critical needs, what, what we'll do, where we're going, and what our deliverables are, and what those next steps are. And therefore, we're really working in phases. So that by having that workshop, it's, it's a clear understanding with everybody what's going on with the project. So any one of these workshops allows a starting point and an educational process about what's happening. And that's probably 99% of all of our all of our engagements will always start with a workshop. And that's what we call our assessment phase. And we find those to be probably very, very beneficial just because it brings everybody to the table up front and it gets and it gets all the information together. Now how does that all pull together in terms of the overall program? Well, this next slide I think will help out a little bit more. We talked I mentioned the word assessment. Well, we talked about that methodology. Well, that methodology here is what we really refer to as our life cycle methodology. We call it our cybersecurity methodology, and it's really what we build our portfolio on. And it's based on four tenets, assessment, development, implement, and management. And if you take a look at the chart, you'll see that we have them broken into those four elements, and we have a number of our more common uh, cybersecurity solutions mapped underneath them. But if you take a look at each one of these elements a little deeper, it'll give you a better appreciation for what of, of the importance of each one. Stage one, the assessment. Again, we talked a little bit about it, but let's go a little deeper. You know, at that assessment, you know, we'll sit down, depending on which assessment or workshop we pick, but generically speaking, you know, this is what we're doing. You know, we're going to sit down and review your current network. We're going to look at, we're going to try our best and work with you and we're going to identify any problems or issues and then we're going to get a report with remediation and then that's going to be followed by stage two. Now stage two is that architecture and policy development stage, the development point. Now using an assessment or the assessment we just did, we're going to plan, put some guidelines and identify what needs to be implemented. That's that design. And we're going to develop a full out remediation plan outlining all the steps of a design that needs, that needs to be done to make it all happen now. And, that, and that's your plan, your cybersecurity solution. The third step is the implementation or the modernization implementation piece. And that's where our security team comes in and turns it into reality. It's where the rubber meets the road. You know, we'll do the procurement, the staging the installation, and the commissioning, and we'll turn it on. And that all happens in stage three. Stage four is probably one of the more important po points, and this is the management optimization. This is where we sit down and begin to work really actually much more closely with you, because this is where the management of your network comes in. You know, we're going to work to provide a mechanism that's going to help you improve, optimize, you know, and continue, the continuously changing landscape of your network usage. Because one thing that is guaranteed is your network's never going to be static. There's always going to be ads and changes going on the whole time. And it's imperative in a security environment to be able to monitor the network, log the network, and know what's, being, what's going on. And so through this life cycle process, it allows us to do assessments, development, implement, and management. So as an example, you know, we may start off with a site assessment is one of the assessments we do. And we'll come in, do look at the network, identify it, look at the topology, check your security posture, come back with a report and remediation. Next up would be the design phase. We could come back and say, okay, based on our discussions, our design, um, it, you know, we're going to do a security, uh, site security design. And that design is going to consist of 
patch management and logging to be able to push out your uh, software patches. And then the implementation phase is let's get in there, let's get it installed, but while we're here and we're installing some servers and you have other servers around, we're going to harden all the servers, bring everything up to an establish a new baseline, and then lastly, we'll sit down and look at the network management. And that's how the life cycle works. But what's very unique about the life cycle is how that life cycle works in terms of your project planning. And so if you're working with a modernization initiative that's already ongoing or you already have a project that's already out there, one of the challenges in a point solution world of hardware software is if you don't have your product positioned up front, you miss the whole life cycle of your projects. Well, our life cycle, because of how we've built it on, on those four core tenants, if you've already done an assessment, we can come in, work with you on the design work. So if you've already moved beyond the, the assessment phase and the design phase, and now you're coming into the actual implementation phase, well, we can come in and work with you on the implementation phase. So the life cycle approach that, we've been, that we utilize meshes nicely with project and program life cycles that all of our customers like you use. So it allows us to be able to engage you at virtually any point in your program, and we can mesh up with one of our programs to work alongside with you. And at each juncture, we can engage you and really provide some cybersecurity value. So this life cycle approach really allows us to provide some true comprehensive cybersecurity solutions for you. So we've talked a lot about cybersecurity solutions and, and you know and what we provide and go on with. The next stop here is probably probably equally important to customers is support. We also provide a comprehensive support offering. So if you're, you know, Invences provides customer first. So if you're familiar with it or not, customer first is the Invences service program. And underneath that customer first service program, we offer the cybersecurity maintenance program. And the cybersecurity maintenance program allows us to provide uh, existing cybersecurity customers or our cybersecurity customers three different tiers of support. And those three different tiers allow you to pick what works best for you, or if you're a customer first customer, it allows you to pick whichever one fits your existing contract, whether you're a standard premium or elite customer. Uh, what's nice about it is we've added cybersecurity elements to the program. So we've modified it from its typical hardware or software centric uh, view and we've made it into a more of a cybersecurity by adding elements such as compliance assessments and compliance uh, maintenance elements. But we've also added to the hardware software piece uh, support for third party elements for both hardware software that we tend to utilize within our solutions as well. And as we basic as we near the close here, uh, just want to kind of summarize a lot of what we've talked about and tie it, if you would, back to the theme of our conversation, which is around the business and operation piece. You know, the three major areas around the enterprise control system and cybersecurity that that have that cybersecurity has the greatest impact on is the planning, uh, the network management, and secure data acquisition. And if you look at the planning and methodology perspective. The life cycle methodology we just spoke about makes it easier for you to, de to define your technology roadmap because we can engage you at any point. With a successful cybersecurity program in place, you also get the benefit of policies and procedures uh, that, help, uh, that help with the deployment of the cybersecurity solution in the network. But it also helps when we do the workshops and we're on site is the fact that we work with you to help develop that culture of cybersecurity because 
workshops also bring everybody together, as I mentioned, and that helps to define the roles and responsibilities. And that is truly at the, at the core of, this, of the culture of cybersecurity, which is ultimately the success of a cybersecurity solution. If the people are not on board, it's very, very hard for these solutions to ultimately be successful. The other thing that impacts the planning and the methodology is we do utilize uh, COTS or, the, or you know, common off-the-shelf components. We use hardening and other security controls that we utilize. And then we'll turn them into function-specific devices for our workstations, jump servers, monitors, et cetera. These are utilized by us, um, and it helps us to make sure that we have product availability, puts controls on costs, things of this nature. If you look at the cybersecurity network management piece, the Invensys cybersecurity solutions help maintain the system and protect against vulnerabilities, which also helps protect business continuity. So centralized management point in your system for solutions such as patch management or log management or network management are really critical to ensure that maintenance of the solution. We also have centralized backup and restoration strategies for making sure that you are keeping all of your core, core and critical information backed up, and we provide strategies for doing that so that you can bring it to a NAS or bring it to a hard drive and then take it to remote locations. Uh, we also provide deployment uh, of a centralized network management monitoring system, which will help you log, diagnose system issues. Um, and then the secure data acquisition. Now, secure data acquisition, a lot of people look at it as just firewalls, but really it, it's much bigger than that. It also helps you minimize uh, your network traffic, uh, help restrict access, and restrict access means give access to where it needs to be, take it from where it doesn't, get it to the right people, and get take it from those who don't need it. But it also allows us to provide remote access solutions for off-site users, the trades, or third parties, and also segregate system restrict access from the corporate domain versus the process control network. And these are all very important things. So at the end of the day, how do we get there? Well, again, number one, we have to know your needs. What do you need? What are your drivers and your goals? Two, get that solution. Figure out from your needs, meet the solution. And then thirdly, knowledge. You know, we understand that not every client has in-house cybersecurity expertise. So we'll work with you on that. The cybersecurity team will work closely with you. We'll help educate and we'll explain what's being done, how it's being done, and why it's being done. And that'll take us to our last polling question, I promise. And this one, let me see if you open the polling. This one is our last one, and it has to do with what do you look for in a cybersecurity vendor? So this one is pick is just pick one. So it's, everybody can just pick their favorite one and let you go from there. So this will be a quick one, and then uh, we'll be able to close out. So I think we'll call this one done. I think everybody should have had time, so pencils down. Get the results. OK. Qualified staff and, the, and, and cybersecurity knowledge. Good. That pretty much trends with what we saw, to, saw earlier. So interesting. Very good. Thank you. And we'll move on. So that takes us to who are, who are we? Well, the cybersecurity team at Invensys is made up of specialized experiences, as the chart says. Well, what are those experiences? Our team has, is made up of, of varying different technology, industry, and business backgrounds. So we have, um, we're not a team of monolithic people, uh, which is very good. It allows us, it really gives us strength, it gives us the ability to support each other and support you. Everybody has a different background and it's very complimentary. Uh, extensive industry knowledge is key here. Um, all of our team members come from different industry sectors. So, for instance, I mentioned nuclear. Um, we, have, we have a nuclear team, and that team comes from nuclear. They work either in nuclear, um, been in nuclear, or been around nuclear. So there are nuclear players. We have people from power, mining, 
datacom, IT, and telecom, just to name a few. So it's key for us to make sure that when we have people, we have them from the different industries because without that, without that knowledge, it's very hard for them to meet with you and understand what your, what your needs are and what's going on at your facility. And lastly, implementation background. Uh, a lot of times companies that work, that, that like Invences, that may have consultants, they're good at telling you what to do. They just aren't really good at doing it. Um, our team, what we design, we install. So our team does have hands-on experience in the industry. But I think most importantly is despite all the, the various backgrounds that we have, the one thing that ties us all together in the team is our common background, and that common background is cybersecurity. And that is what holds, that is the strength of the team right there, is the cybersecurity. So that's really the close. Um, I want to thank you for uh, attending. I appreciate your time and patience with the polling questions. Uh, we, you know, we just like to get the feedback. Helps us understand if we're on the right page. Uh, the questions are, uh, are valuable and the input is very useful to us. Uh, again, thank you. And I'll turn this back over to Jennifer for the, uh, for the for some, uh, I guess, the, the Q&A and uh, the closing. So again, thank you. And if you have any questions, uh, looking forward to them and my information's at the back. Thanks, Tom. Okay, so um, yeah, go ahead and type in your questions if you do have any. Um, and we'll take a moment um, to review those. And Tom, be ready. Um, I'm ready. Let's see what we have here. Okay, um, yeah, the first question that I did get is, uh, what is your primary industry focus? The primary industry focus, always a good one. Um, I did mention a whole lot of industries that we have experience in. However, uh, the, the key ones that we have been in most involved in um, probably in the last couple of years are, in no particular order, uh, power. And, uh, Power generation, so nuclear and fossil power uh, are probably the, one of the bigger ones. Oil and gas on the refinery side are the other. And uh, one, the other one right now is uh, water wastewater, uh, the water treatment area. Those, those three right now um, are probably the ones that are keeping us the most busiest. Uh, the rest of them, uh, they, we, we we see business from them, but uh, those three right now are the ones that uh, that are definitely the ones coming to us and keeping us the most busy, you know, keeping us the busiest right now. Great. Okay, um, another one just came in. You mentioned um, the life cycle methodology. How does this apply to cybersecurity? Yes, the life cycle methodology. So we did go through it, but in in a, in a nutshell. Um, the life cycle methodology is because we're solution-based, it allows us the opportunity to engage you, all, to take our solutions and engage you from the point of, of an assessment. So if we're doing a, I'll just take, since the last question was stuck in my mind was um, power generation or nuclear. Uh, nuclear would have a certain requirement for a certain type of assessment. And that assessment would kick off a workshop so that everybody understands what's going to be done. And then that would lead to the follow-up work. And that follow-up work would, would be the actual development. And that development work would, be, would, would end, up ending, end up having some implementation. So the life cycle allows us to to move from that whole workshop to the development to the implement in a very nice flowing way so that everybody's involved, the information is, is flowing, but it also has a project plan to it so that it's moving in incremental steps so that as we move along with it, the customer can move along with us. But the other nice part is it allows us to engage at any point in a customer's plan because many times we find our customers uh, they may say, gee, I did not know Invensys does cybersecurity. I wish I know because we're just, we're just got our design done. And then it's like, hey, not a problem. We can start doing the implementation for you. So it works for two advantages. Okay, I've got another question. Um, do you have any expertise in doing cybersecurity consultation in the pharmaceutical industry? 
the pharmaceutical industry, that's a good question. Uh, we, we have not done anything specifically in the pharmaceutical. We have done areas similar to it. Um, again, normally what we find is that um, different industries, it, what it boils down to is a best practice approach. So if there's specific regulatory requirements, our team has the ability to get up to speed quickly. Uh, but a lot of times, for instance, um, we'll find, um, like, uh, we, we're doing some pulp paperwork right now. But again, best practice approach, cybersecurity at its core is, the, you know, it, it's an issue of, the, you know, the ability to go in and execute. And that execution has to do with the defense in depth type of strategy. And usually all regulatory requirements are built around a solid um, uh, best practice approach. Great. Um, and then we just have time for one more question. What government regulatory compliances do you work with? And then secondly, do you only work with um, yeah. government regulatory compliance? Sure. Well, the, the key ones right now uh, are U.S. Re uh, requirements. We work a lot with the um, NEI 0809, which is driven by the uh, which is driven by the U.S. Uh, NRC, which is the for nuclear. There's the NERC SIP for the power. Um, you see a lot of NIST, N-I-S-T, uh, regulations out there for cybersecurity, which a lot of industries use as a backdrop. Uh, so, so that tends to be something that a lot of people just use as kind of a reference standard. So we're very comfortable with that. Uh, and there's a number of other regulatory items that we're familiar with that just come up as, as industry standards. So there's more here than I could probably name. Uh, but in addition to that, no, we just don't do those because uh, a lot of industries aren't regulated and prefer not to be regulated, as I don't blame them. So uh, we, we work a lot outside the regulatory scope, um, um, and, there's, and, and so we work both sides of the fence. Okay, great. Thanks for that last question there. Um, before I conclude uh, today's presentation, I want to remind everyone that next week's topic is um, modernize your work processes. So a quick snapshot of our um, agenda, if you, if you will, Tom, please. Can you advance the slide, please? Okay, great. Yes. So we will be having these webinars, these modernization-themed webinars, every Wednesdays. Um, thanks again, Tom, for your time today. But again, next week we've got a new topic. Um, it is modernizing your work processes. And every week thereafter, every Wednesday, we have two of these taking place throughout the day. Um, so please uh, take the time to, to review that schedule. It is on iom.invensys.com forward slash modernize. Um, where you can review the schedule and uh, actually register. So, um, uh, and then also, please feel free to connect with us through our social media channels. We we are on Twitter. We also have a blog community where the cybersecurity team does uh, maintain uh, an active blog. We're on Facebook, YouTube, and uh, of course LinkedIn. Um, and then finally, as Tom mentioned, he's got his. Uh, contact information here. If you have any questions after the webinar, please feel free to reach out to him. Um, and that's that's it. So thank you so much for for attending today. Um, and thanks, Tom, for for some great content. Thank you.